aspirin, is a member of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, which are used to treat pain, fever, and inflammation. And aspirin is commonly used as an antiplatelet medication due to its ability to inhibit platelets. So, first we will discuss about some important events occurring in inflammation. Whenever there is inflammation, membrane phospholipids are taken up and converted into arachidonic acid by an enzyme called phospholipase. This arachidonic acid is then converted to prostaglandins and prostaciclins by the enzyme cyclooxygenase 1 and 2. Once released, these substances cause vasodilation and increases blood flow to the affected area. They also attract immune cells, especially neutrophils and lymphocytes, and further aggravate the immune response. And they act on the hypothalamus to set the temperature set point at a higher degree, causing fever. They also act on the nociceptive neurons and lower their threshold for painful stimuli. In addition, prostaglandins have other functions as well. These include inducing the secretion of protective mucus in the gastric mucosa, enhance uterine contractions, and reduce gastric acid secretion. Now, what NSAIDs do is they inhibit either COX-1 or 2, or both, and reduce the secretion of prostaglandins and prostaciclins. Aspirin, also known as acetyl salicylic acid, was originally introduced as an anti-inflammatory agent. However, its usage as an anti-inflammatory agent is now replaced by better tolerated NSAIDs. Recently it is used as a cardiovascular drug due to its antiplatelet effect. And aspirin elicits its pharmacological action by irreversibly inhibiting both COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes. Aspirin is usually taken perorally. And a major proportion of the drug is absorbed by the small intestine. Its oral bioavailability is about 75% and it is available as suppositories and IV preparations as well. Once in the bloodstream, aspirin causes inhibition of platelet function. To understand this, we need to recall the function of prostaglandin and platelet aggregation. In platelets, arachidonic acid is formed by the membrane phospholipids. And this arachidonic acid is converted into prostaglandin by the enzyme COX-1. Then prostaglandin is converted to thromboxane A2, which causes platelet aggregation and formation of blood clots. What aspirin does is, it irreversibly inhibits COX-1 enzyme and reduces the formation of prostaglandin and thereby platelet aggregation. And this will cause prolonged bleeding time without affecting prodrombin time and activated partial thromboplastin time. And also, even though aspirin has a shorter half-life, it causes a prolonged inhibition of platelet function. This is due to the irreversible nature of drug action and lack of nuclei in platelets. Once COX-1 is irreversibly inhibited, the enzyme is no longer able to function. And as platelets lack nuclei, they cannot synthesize new COX-1 enzymes themselves. So, to achieve a normal level of COX-1 enzymes, there should be new platelet formation in the bone marrow. This is the reason for prolonged duration of action of the drug. In the liver, aspirin is hydrolyzed into salicylate. This is the actual anti-inflammatory metabolite of aspirin. But unlike aspirin, it has no antiplatelet effect. Elimination of salicylate is primarily renal. Salicylate works by inhibition of COX-2 enzyme. And this reduces the synthesis of prostaglandins. Which ultimately reduces inflammation, pain, and fever. So, aspirin is indicated in conditions like headache, musculoskeletal and dental pain as well. In addition, it is used in the short-term management of chronic pain, including osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis. As we discussed before, aspirin is mainly used in immediate and long-term management of cardiovascular disease. So, aspirin is given to patients immediately after a myocardial infarction. This will prevent new clot formation and reduce the risk of developing a recurrent myocardial infarction. It can also be given during a myocardial infarction to prevent further damage to already ischemic myocardium. Most of the time, aspirin is given along with other anticoagulants like clopidogrel to increase the efficacy. Aspirin is also used as a prophylactic treatment for the patients who are at risk of developing thrombosis with other risk factors like dyslipidemia and diabetes mellitus. Now let's see some common adverse effects of aspirin. Inhibition of COX-1 enzyme in stomach will reduce the amount of cytoprotective prostaglandins, which can cause gastritis, gastric ulcers, and GI bleeding. Inhibition of COX-2 in kidneys will reduce prostaglandin synthesis and thereby dilation of renal arteries, which ultimately results in reduced renal blood flow. This may lead to acute kidney injury. 
Not only that, reduced renal blood flow will activate renin-angiotensin-aldosterone pathway, and this will lead to hypertension. Another well-known adverse effect of aspirin is hypersensitivity reactions. One common example is aspirin-induced asthma. The mechanism by which aspirin induces asthma is still not very clear. However, some theories suggest that inhibition of COX pathway by aspirin will reduce the prostaglandin synthesis, and at the same time it upregulates the lipoxygenous pathway, which results in increased leukotrien production. And leukotrienes are the major type of mediators responsible for the pathogenesis of asthma. And another important fact to keep in mind is that aspirin should not be given to reduce fever in children with viral infections because it can cause Ray syndrome, which is characterized by liver damage and encephalopathy. Another serious adverse effect of aspirin is acute salicylate poisoning. It is a medical emergency and occurs due to aspirin overdose, commonly seen in children and attempted suicides. It is characterized by tinnitus, vertigo, deafness, nausea and vomiting and respiratory alkalosis.